Hello, and welcome to the Smart Academy at the Smart Family of Cooling Products. Today, we're going to talk about measuring airflow. We're going to talk about tools, and we're going to talk uh, why measuring airflow is so important in our job and at the job sites. First and foremost, if we're doing a temporary or permanent air conditioning, heating, dehumidification project, how do we know what we're supplying to the customer? How do we quantify the air conditioning work we're doing, the heating work we're doing, or dehumidification if we can't measure airflow? So it's very, very critical that any time we go on a temporary or permanent install, we're able to measure that airflow so that we can quantify what we're giving to the customer. Okay. Now, if we want to go out and we want to measure airflow, there's a specific tool that we're normally going to use to measure the quantity of air that we're providing to that customer. And that device is called an anemometer. The definition of an anemometer is really a device that's used to measure air speed. Okay? In our business, there's lots of different anemometers that can be used, but let's talk briefly about history. The first anemometer was designed in 1450 by Leon Battista Alberti, and he's kind of one of those Renaissance men that was a designer, sculptor, mathematician, you name it. He designed the first anemometer simply by putting a specially designed piece of wood perpendicular to airflow, and he used that tool so that he was able to quantify how much air he was getting. Today, there's lots of different types that you might see out in the world. The first and foremost, the one I see all the time, is a cup-type anemometer. And all that is is you have a whole bunch of cups that are positioned perpendicular to the airflow. Some, some of the cup catches that airflow. It turns a shaft. And how quickly that shaft spins determines how much air, the volume of air that that cup anemometer is using. Uh, those are relatively cheap. You'll see them all over the place. However, we don't typically use them in the HVAC business. The next two types of anemometers that I'll talk about are ones that we see in the HVAC business. Uh, the next one I'll tell you is a vein anemometer. Uh, as you can see here, this anemometer actually has veins or multiple blades that are uh, in opposition to the airflow. Okay. Um, the vein anemometer that I like to use, or that I use more often than not, is made by X-Tech. It is an AN100. I use this because it's relatively reliable. It's relatively uh, cost efficient. It's, it's cheap, and you can get this on Amazon. I think I looked today, and an AN100 is $170 on Amazon, so it's easy to get. There's a couple things that are important when we're using the vein axial or vein anemometer. I'll go through that in just a second, but again, vein anemometer, we've got a whole bunch of veins or blades that are in opposition to airflow. That's this type. Easy to tell if you see the, the veins inside, which you can see in this one here. Probably the most accurate device to use when measuring airflow is a hot wire anemometer. Hot wire anemometer typically uses two leads and we run a current or electrical flow between the two leads or hot wires and based upon the temperature change and or current between those two wires we can determine how much airflow is passing through it. Um, hot wire anemometers are very very accurate however based upon how they're used you can get very different measurements and they're relatively expensive. The hot wire anemometer that I use, I have two of them in my normal kit. One is $1,300, one is $1,800. So again, I typically use a vein anemometer for most of my quick measurements or job site measurements, and a vein anemometer is what I recommend as a basic tool that most technicians should have in their arsenal. Again, this particular model is an AN100, okay? So when we talk about using an anemometer. I want to go through this particular one to start. For this device, we're measuring the volume of air or airflow. For most purposes, we're measuring CFM or cubic feet per minute. If I go up and down on the units button here, I can select CFM, which I've already done. Okay. So if I stick this device perpendicular into the airflow, which I'll show you in a few minutes here, this device will measure the cubic feet per minute CFM or volume of air going across the anemometer. Okay. 
One important note, and probably the most difficult thing just to realize and understand about most anemometers, specifically the vein anemometers, is that you have to plug in the area that you're measuring before this thing will correctly read CFM, okay? So what I mean by that is we've got some 20 inch ducts here. If I put this anemometer in this 20 inch duct, the anemometer doesn't know if that air is in a 20 inch duct or if it's in a 10 or a 12. So you have to actually go into most anemometers and you have to plug in the area where you're measuring. So you're typically going to do that just by holding the area key and then plugging in, it's normally feet squared or square feet for the area that we're measuring. So let me show you the math behind that just so we're all together and you know how to do it when you're setting it up in the field, okay? This particular piece of duct, doesn't matter, we have blue, yellow supply return, they're typically about the same size. We say that this is a 20 inch duct. We can see the interior dimension is about 20 inches there. So how do we calculate area? Well, it's a pretty simple formula. We remember from our early math classes, area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Okay, no, it's been a while since we've taken math courses for most of us, but pi is a constant and it's equal to 3.14 and then a whole bunch of digits after it. But for our purposes, we're just gonna use 3.14. Well, to figure out the area, we also need the radius of the circle that we're going to measure. Now, again, we're going to go back into math class. If I've got my duct and it's a circle, and I measure that duct, and I say the interior dimension is 20 inches, 20 inches is the diameter. The radius is equal to diameter divided by two. So in this case, my radius is gonna be equal to 20 inches divided by two or 10 inches. So the radius is simply the distance from the center of the circle to any edge, which in our case is 10 inches or the diameter divided by two. So if I wanna know if I want to calculate my area so that I can use my anemometer correctly, I need to know the radius, and then we have the constant pi. So let's go ahead and let's actually calculate out that value. So the area of our, of our circle, our 20 inch duct, is going to be pi times 10 inches squared. So all I did is I showed my work for the math here. So pi is 3.14 times the radius of 10 inches squared, so 10 times 10. 3.14 times 100 is 314 inches squared. Okay, now the only problem is most anemometers, when you plug in area, you have to plug it in in square feet. That's how most anemometers are designed. So we just calculated that value in inches. I did that on purpose so you could see how to convert from inches to feet as well. So there are 144 inches squared in one square foot. And how that's calculated is pretty simple. Area of a square
area of a square rectangle is 12 inches times 12 inches in our case, 12 by 12, we get 144 inches squared is equal to one square foot. So if I want to convert this value from inches to feet, I just divide by 144. So again, if I want to convert this, Just take my 314 inches, divide it by 144, and I'll get this. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's do that math that we just had on the board. So we have 314 inches squared. I'm going to divide that by 144 inches per square foot to get the total amount of square feet. And then it equals 2.180555 or 2.18 or 2.2. So if I wanted to plug in the area for a 20-inch duct, I would typically use 2.18. That's the value that I would plug in for feet squared. Okay? In a moment, we're going to put on our PPE, and we're going to go outside on a unit, and we're going to actually take some measurements. But before we do that, I just want to recap the anemometer so we're, we're all together we're on the same page. First anemometer developed in 1450, so almost 600 years ago. We have multiple changes since then, obviously. The vein anemometer is the most constant. That's the one that we're going to be using out in the field. When we take our measurements using the anemometer, we need to know the area of the target surface that we're going to be measuring. If we're using a round duct, then we need to measure the diameter and divide it by two to get the radius so that we can use our formula here to calculate the area. If we're plugging that into an anemometer that will only take it in feet squared, we need to convert from inches squared to feet so we can get the total amount that we're going to use, which in our case is going to be 2.18 feet squared for 20 inch round flexible duct for temporary use. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this first part. Give me a minute. We'll go outside. We'll start taking some measurements. Please stay safe.